Good morning. Okay. Oh, my dog's going to bark. I haven't had as much of that this year. Or this stitch along of him barking every time I talk. Um, okay, so this is super exciting. We're going to work on this flower. So we're going to start working on this guy. And I'm really excited. Also slightly nervous. Because I've actually never done, like, the that long and short stitch on a live. I don't use it a ton. Like, I use a little variation of it. But this is probably the most... Um, what would the word be? I don't know. The fanciest, I guess, is kind of like the fanciest one I've ever done for a pattern for you guys. And so to teach it is kind of new to me. I um, have never taught it to you guys on here. So, and the same with the knots in the center. Those will be tomorrow. And I'm like, mm -hmm. so you guys will get to see me flail on here. Okay. So we're gonna get started on this flower and I'm gonna show you where you start, how, um, and sort of why. So when I, oh, oh, oh. Um, first I'm gonna, <laughs> we're gonna start with three, three strands. We're gonna start with three strands. So while I'm yakking on, you can uh, split your thread. Uh, and we're starting with the lightest color on the outside. So we're gonna start from the top and move down. Um, okay, sorry, the point of my story, that what I was trying to say there before I, okay, it's Wednesday, I can't speak. Um, you're gonna, the lines that come on the pattern template, we were talking about this a little bit yesterday. Um, when you're doing a, le a flower like this, once you've stitched the main stitches, you can't see the guidelines for your little accent ones. Um, and then you're gonna... So for this one, because you're stitching down and you're only doing like half the leaf, you will see these lines. So I actually think that on this pattern, it's worth putting the lines on there. I did mine a little bit differently. I did like little ones here to kind of show me where I'm stopping for my long and short. And then these middle ones are going to be kind of where I'm going over for the middle color. And then the little ones will show me where the darker ones will be. And since you're moving downwards, you're not going to cover them. Um, I don't know why you didn't get the notification for, um, day one and two, but, um, you, uh, can find the replays on the reel section in my Instagram and, um, under series, like, I don't know if anybody else, I'm assuming you can see this on your end, is, uh, at the top left-hand side of the reel section, there's a little button that says series. It's like a drop-down menu. In that drop-down menu is all of the videos like organized by day. Okay, so we've got three strands, popping it on our needle. And we're gonna get going. Okay, so I'm just gonna start, let's just start right here. So long and short, the thing about this is you have to kind of, there isn't really, or from what I've kind of done, there isn't really like a method to how to know, where to like, which <laughs> which ones to go long and which ones to go short you're just going to kind of start so um this middle these middle lines are where my middle section is going to kind of come to so i'm going to start and i'm going to just do one oops one of like oh gosh we're off to such a good start you guys <laughs> i can't talk okay so we're going to do one shorter and then I'm gonna go next to it and I'm gonna do, or sorry, one medium length. I'm gonna do one like, actually, let me just look at my pattern. I'm gonna go a little bit further down. So that one's kind of like a medium length. This one's maybe a little bit longer. Sorry, I'm gonna be concentrating here. So if I miss any comments, you guys can comment again if it's a question you want answered because the cr crummy part um so then I'm going to do like another short one is that I can't once you've played like on the live video the replay part doesn't show me all of your comments so I can't go back and be like oh this person asked this and I missed it I can't see that so um okay and then you're still following like as if you were gonna you kind of have to keep in mind like you're trying to make it look like it's all meeting in the center here 
So one of the tricks that I use if I'm like, what angle do I want my thread on? I lay my thread kind of down on my fabric and I'm like, okay, I want it. That's where I want it to be. And then I'll push my needle through where that spot would be. So that helps me keep the right angle when I'm not actually making it all the way to the bottom. So I've done some longer ones. I'm going to do a shorter one. And then I'm going to do a really long one. And around the sides, um, I went all the way to the bottom. So I'm kind of staggering down and filling um, in the sides. I'll get shorter as we go to. So you're doing just kind of back and forth between long and short, but you're not doing the exact same length for each long or for each short. And you can do too long or you can do too short or you can do. And you don't really need to overthink this part, or at least I didn't, even the very first time I did it. I just kind of went for it because then when you add in your next color, you can adjust anything that you're like, oh, that one, because you're going to cover a lot of it too. Is it possible to zoom in? Sure, I just don't know how well the quality is going to get. The closer I get, the fuzzier the quality gets. Hopefully that's still good. Is that better? Okay, and then along the side, I'm kind of just, um, just sort of framing the side. So it's more like staggered stitches than it is like long and short coming from the top, if that makes sense. So imagine like little steps going down the side. Or that's how, my, that's how my brain imagines it. Okay, so we're going to come back up over here. We're going to do, oops, a little bit of a longer one. Is it better without the light? We talked about this yesterday. So that's without the light. I think it might be better today with it. Even though it's a little bit glary. Um, let me know which one you guys prefer. I don't know if without the light, if it's just way too dark, but then it's also kind of got a glare with the light. So, oh, I wonder if this will work. Does that help? Move the light back a little bit so it's kind of there, but not so glaring with the light for me. Okay. With the light. Okay. All right. Is it better that it's back or should I move it back to the front? I just find this color is like so shiny. Ooh. Right there, we'll leave it there. If you guys want me to move it back again, I can. Okay, so we're doing like, and then sometimes I'm gonna throw in like a nice little short one. Like you wanna give it, move it to the front, I think, okay. Um, that should be back where it was then. Okay, and then we're going to do like one really long one, you know, like you want it to be, you don't want it to look something, there's a little fluff in there. And then, yeah, you don't want it to look what is the word I'm looking for, you guys? The only word popping into my head is like routine, but that's not the right word. Like you don't want it to look over planned is kind of what I'm trying to say. See, and now this one, see this line, it's not on the right angle. It's coming down like this and I, it should have come down on this angle. So I'm just gonna kind of cover it with a longer stitch. Yeah, like an ununiform. You don't want it to look uniform. That's exactly it. What did I say? What was the word I tried to use? Routine. <laughs> I don't know, guys. Something's not right with my brain this morning. Nothing's coming out right. Um, so yeah, you don't want it to have like that uniform look. You want it to have 
um, free flowing. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yes, you want it to have um, just go in with the flow. You want it to look effortless when you actually put a lot of effort into it too. <laughs> I don't think that's the first time, um, Lori, that you've had to like answer me when I didn't know the word on a live. Okay, and then we're kind of tearing these on the way down to fill in the sides. And then I always, I did like one stitch right to the bottom. Um, so that it's framing, and that's another good word to view it. You're framing the outside of your petal. I'm gonna do a couple of stitches over on here just till my thread runs out, and then I am gonna do the second color and then the third color um, so that we can get one petal done. I would typically, if I was doing this like just on my own, I would do all of it, like do all my blue, but actually I think if you're just starting this for the first time, the one of the best things to do is to do one petal and see what you like learn. Because if you do the outside of every single one and then you get to go do it and you're like, oh man, you know what would have been better as you're starting to add your second layer of stitches, you, can, you can't adjust all of these ones out here. So start with one petal and like finish it completely. To be honest, oh, actually, let me guys show you guys what I did on mine, because then this will explain. So look at mine. Can you tell that I did one petal? I think you, maybe if you look like really closely, if I tell you that I did one of them different than the other ones, you can maybe tell. But I changed my technique as I was going, which I don't. And all of them, I'm like, oh, yeah, I changed a little bit there. I changed a little bit there because I started to like it a certain way. Um... And then I was like, oh, I think so I you can do all of the light blue and then come back <clears throat> and do all of the dark blue or the medium medium blue and then come back and do all of the dark. But to be honest, if I the way I did it, because I I don't know if that's like an anxiety thing that I was like, if I do all of this and then I don't like the way it looks, um, then I have to rip it all out. Maybe it's that. But I think it's more just the fact that you can you learn a lot as you're going. Okay, something's not right on the angle that I have these stitches on and I can't. I'm gonna come back to over here and I'm gonna get my angle right and then I'm gonna correct. Yeah, so you can see that it's like, I'm gonna kinda, another thing you could do. Yeah, that's weird right there. I'm just gonna try to cover it. Um, sorry, I'm using three strands. Uh, the other thing you could do is you can kind of do like uh, spread them out at the beginning. So I'm going to spread out and I'm going to do a bunch of long ones like this. Instead of doing them all side by side, do like a long one every all the way around. Do a bunch of long ones and then come back and do a bunch of like halfway ones. And then come back and do a bunch of short ones and just kind of throw them in there until you filled all of them in. I'm out of thread on this one. So we're going to pop back to the other one. But um, that's also a good option for one. I think it'll like if you do the long ones first, it'll kind of set your angle a bit. Because if you noticed what happened to me there was I started I'm doing them. You're do, it's like the same as a satin when you're doing a satin stitch. If you break them up into like chunks on the right angle it'll keep when you're filling the spaces in the right angle right right okay um I still feel like this light isn't quite right I think it's like the color of it sorry I like I just play with that light no I made it worse I think I'm not doing a good job. All right, it's the best I'm gonna do for now. Okay, so um, 
All right, so next, because I want to show you all of it, like one full petal, and I'm done that thread now, let's take our <clears throat> medium blue, which I think, um, 926. So you're gonna take three strands of 926. I think it's the color of the thread too. It's like the, sh like even just, it's just such a like shiny um, shade. It's, yeah, the darker one. It's a, every color has like its own. The dark ones are really hard to see sometimes in photos because they just look like a blob or in like videos. The light ones have like too much reflection. That's what it is. It's like a reflection. Um, okay, so we've got three strands. Thank you guys for bearing with me with this light. It's going to bug me so much. I'm trying to like not make it direct on it, but still give you guys like some of the light. Maybe like that. We'll try. Because this part, I want you to be able to see like where my needle is coming up. Okay, let's try that. That's close. Very, very close. Okay, so you have more than one option. I've noticed that I'm going to start from down here. I'm not going to start by coming up where the stitches already are. I'm going to start from the bottom, stitch into where the stitches already are. So in this one, I'm just going to start right in the middle. I'm going to start pretty close to the bottom, kind of where I'm starting my stitches, kind of where the dark ones will cover because you want them to and then I'm gonna meet or overlap where my stitches already are so I'm gonna kind of tuck I don't know it's not super clear do computer screens cover and place it what was that Sorry, do computer screens cover and place it off all the light. It will help diffuse the glare. You're gonna have to um, let me know that one a little bit. I'm, I didn't, uh, my, my little brain's not comprehending that one, but I, if you wanna DM me, Laurie, I think that you've got some advice that might help, but <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna try to, I don't know if you guys can see very well. So you're coming up. The more I zoom in, the harder it is to see. Okay, how is the picture on that for you guys to see it? Okay, I'm going to come up. I'm going to go, I'm sorry, I'm on like a weird angle trying to get this close enough to you guys. Maybe from the side. Okay, so I'm going to come up. I'm going to go in, instead of meeting right at that stitch, I'm gonna go beside it and kind of between them. Good, a little dark. I know, I'm trying to figure out my lighting a little bit. Okay, one sec. Okay, I'm gonna try that. Feels a little better, maybe. Okay. This is the part I want you guys to really be able to see me, see what I'm doing. It's my head, too, in the way. Okay. And then you're going to come up. And again, I'm trying to meet. It's great when my hand comes up. Oh, because it's covering the glare, probably, like that. Um, I'm trying to meet those stitches, but also, so if some of them, what I did was I met right up with where the stitch was. Okay. And then some of them I overlapped and went like through and between. Okay, so you're kind of like, 
And I don't, for me, I didn't focus too much on my bottom because your blue is going to come up, but you can stagger your lengths a bit here too, because it's the same concept. Your, your short and long are happening down here too with your next. So we're coming up. I just wanna make sure I'm on the right angle. So we're coming up, I'm gonna go right up to this one and meet it. And you're gonna have less stitches on your second one than you are, like on your second color, you're gonna have less stitches than you did on your first one. Cause again, you have a way smaller space to fill. I think this part can feel maybe more daunting than it actually is. Like it looks like, oh gosh, how do I know where to put the stitches? Oh no, like where do I fill this or fill that? But once you get started and you just go for it, um, it's really not as complicated or as difficult as it looks. Um, it's, I think it's really forgiving, especially like in this case, obviously I'm gonna do, sorry, I'm just looking at, and do one more right here. And I'm just gonna come up and I'm gonna go a little bit further because I want. Because you can just kind of add them like where you want. If you're like, oh, I want it to be, a little bit more like I want to go up here just pop a stitch on top if you're like everything looks um everything looks really low here and I don't have any long ones that's okay just throw a long one on top stagger them and add more there just add them where you feel like oh I need a long one there like right now I'm just throwing an extra long one in here because I just felt like I needed a little bit Right there. Okay. Do you leave gaps to fill with the next color or fill it all and then add the next color on top? No, so um, I'm guessing Marie missed the beginning part of this video. Um, that's still light. Um, you can see on these ones, I'm just going different lengths like halfway down. Um, to three quarters of the way down, longer and shorter, longer and shorter. We're going to do another one after this. If you stay on, like if you keep, keep, have the time to stay on, I'm going to do the second one. I'm just doing one full petal and then we'll move on to the next one um, and keep going. So I think I'm good with how many uh, of the medium blue I've put. I'm going to start, I'm just going to add one right here because there's a little gap and I'm going to make it a short one. Okay. Um, and then we're going to add our dark color. And almost everything for what just happened. Oh, weird. <laughs> I think the pat the piece on my holder thing just slid in front. Okay, so we're going to go to our dark color and we're going to add just a few. You don't need a lot of stitches. It's just a couple. Yeah, sorry, I was saying this pattern is all three strands except for, I think, two stitches. This one did have the correct color guide. <laughs> I figured out what had happened with that. I have two versions of this PDF and I must have saved the wrong file. Um, and linked it to the wrong file. So like when you use, yeah, so 
it's all fixed and anyone who ordered the PDF actually should have gotten an email with the updated revised version, which I did not know Shopify did that. And that makes me so happy because there are times where you start um, a new, you make a pattern and well, if you've ever bought my patterns, it does happen <laughs> um, where something I'll be like, oh, I didn't, you know, that mistake happened or whatever, typos. And not that I would probably send everybody a revised version for my typos, but we'd be here all day. Okay, so I'm just putting three strands of uh, 413, I think. You can check your color guide, but it's our dark, dark, dark one. So we're just going to pop the same thing we did before. This one, um, you're just doing the same thing. The, I didn't worry as much about where my bottom stitches were, so don't follow that as your guide, if that makes sense. Like, Don't meet up with those as your guide for where to go. Just pop a bunch of shorter and longer little ones in here or if you did organize your second layer at the bottom too to be long and short it's just a lot for your brain to think about where do I want this one where do I want that one whereas going over top or through this a couple times is not going to um, like it's not going to look strange if you're going over top okay so I kind of just did a bunch of the same ish length a few stitches away from each other all along the bottom so I started oh I'm gonna move you guys in because I think you guys like it when it's closer is that right oh that's kind of nice but can I see it <laughs> okay that's a good view okay so see how they're um, a few stitches away from each other on each one at the bottom here then Problem is I'm looking over my camera, so it's hard for me to see. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna add a long one in between that one. Give myself some length. And over here, I'm gonna add a long one. And I'm just looking at it and saying, what's gonna look the best? I think I want some long ones on the sides. I'm kinda running my needle over top of it which helps smooth it down so I can see the whole picture, if that makes sense. So I'm actually kind of like where we're at right now, but I feel like I want one more stitch in the center. Just trying to figure out which spot I want it in. Let's go with right here. do right there okay sorry it's going to take me a second to read that comment if you are doing a petal all the same color with a long and short stitch would you do the same process from top First oh um oof. to be honest i'm trying to think like i don't think i would use oh i don't like the way that looks um sorry guys i don't like the way that final stitch looked looks makes it just look bumpy um I'm not sure I would use a long and short oh oh um sorry let me think about that for a second I'm trying to picture using the long and short um on a one color I don't think so I think what you're referring to is kind of the way I do my satin stitch flowers where some of them are long, some of the stitches are long and some of the stitches are short er, and some of the stitches make it all the way to the bottom. So one way you can do that is you can do a bunch of half length stitches and then a bunch of short stitches and then do all of the ones from the top all the way to the bottom. I think if that's the look that you're kind of talking about. Um, sorry guys, I don't know why, but I just really didn't like the way that one stitch in the center finished it. It didn't look the way I wanted it to, so I wanted to take that out. Um, I think either what I would do here, 
for mine. You can um, send me a picture of the flower you're talking about in your work. And maybe I'll get a better idea because then I'm thinking if you're doing like long and short, you could do it that way and have it and then it just creates some texture in the stitching. Or if you're just trying to fill in a petal and make it all look like a sad stitch, but you've been told to do the long and short because I know in one of the patterns I once bought, that's how they did it. So maybe, sorry, I'm, I'm what I'm gonna, um, maybe just DM me and we can, I can chat about it. Okay, so this one, I need to fill in this little gap, but when I put that long, I just felt it made it look like really, I lost a lot of the texture that I wanted. So I'm gonna do a tiny short one just to fill in that white space that needs to still be filled in. Oops, my tail's too long. Okay, so I've, cause I like the shape of my stitches right now. So I just did a teensy one. Yeah, when I put that long one in the center, it just made it all look too much of a blob. Okay, so there you have it. That one looks pretty, I like that one. Looks good, it's nicely faded. Looks, um, yeah, looks good. Okay, so next we're gonna move on to this petal here and I'm gonna finish up with the long and short um, stitches there and then we'll do uh, the next one. The other thing I'm looking at, I'm looking at my last one, like the one that I did the other day. And then I'm looking at the petals on this one and I'm comparing them because they don't actually, uh, look as similar here. I'm going to zoom us out. I don't know, maybe they do. It's just not done. They look a little different, I think. And I think that's because I may or may not have gone further up on some of my... We'll see when it's done. Um, that's the one thing that I find kind of like funny is that whenever I do a piece like I do a pattern even my own patterns they will not look identical to the last time I did it I don't know why maybe it's just because you do things a slightly different sometimes or your stitches you know nothing's gonna ever look exactly the same so I've kind of stopped comparing them. It's happened to me before where I like try to recreate something and I'm like, why, why don't I like it as much this time? And it's like, if you're striving, you know, it's like when you make a recipe at home and you're like, oh my gosh, that was so good. And then you try to make it again. And it just, even you're following the pattern some, or the, the recipe sometimes, and it just doesn't taste the same. I don't know if that happens to anybody else. Maybe it's an expectation thing. You liked it a certain way or the first time you had it, you were like, oh, that's so good. And then you try it again and you're like, wait, why is this not living up to the expectation that I had for it? Um, I think that that can happen with embroidery too. And especially when you're like maybe doing someone's pattern, you're thinking like, oh, it doesn't look like theirs. I'm being honest here. Mine don't look like mine sometimes, my own. Like it's it, no two are gonna look exactly the same, I don't think. Maybe there's people who can do that. I've, I haven't quite figured it out, even following my own patterns. Okay, so we're doing our long and short. That one was nice and long. We're gonna do this one a little bit differently, if you saw. I remember I'm splitting it into sections for this one instead of doing like a side by side. So this is what I was referring to when I was trying to answer that question before about, um, doing a long and short in all one color. I have done patterns before, like other people's patterns, where they do a satin stitch flower and they kind of call it like a long and short. And then you do one layer like this and then you fill in the gaps by doing the rest long. That's the same as when I do my satin stitch flowers and I do one stitch shorter than a long one, than a shorter one, and I tuck them underneath. The intention for that is the same that I talk about all the time, is to make sure that you have more stitches on the outside than um, coming straight to the base, because if you have that many in the center, it's gonna bulk up. So now I'm just going through, so now that I've done pretty much all my long ones all the way around, I'm kind of just going in and I'm doing my shorter ones to fill in the top. 
I bet you this petal is going to look different though than the other petal because I'm doing a different technique, which is fine. Um, maybe this is what I did more on the other when I did the first one. And we'll see which one looks more similar. I think my variation right now from long to short is more drastic on this petal than it was on my last petal. Which I guess I said before that I think you should do each petal separately. Maybe that's not true. Maybe you need to do, I guess it depends on your personality. My personality is okay with the fact that one petal may look slightly different than the other one. That doesn't bother me as much. If you are a person who, if you can tell that they look slightly different because halfway through you changed a little bit of your technique, maybe you need to do them all <laughs> the same, like start with the blue on the outside, then go to the medium color so that you're using the same, you're not changing. Oh, you know what? I like it better this way. And my personality is fine with that. <laughs> My personality is like, oh, I changed the way I did it and it looks, because that's not, I know there's people who when they, once they find a mistake, they'll stare at it and it'll bother them, like, whereas I'm not like that. I'm like, ooh, I'm going to hide my mistake and it's not going to bother me at all. <laughs> so this is a good moment to recognize which personality you have <laughs> and then make your decision. Um, I've learned to recognize that there are different personalities doing these patterns too. So then it's like the people who are very like meticulous about stuff and how everything has to be. Whereas I'm a bit more of a fly by the seat of your pants and I'm okay with that. But, um, that's been my recognizing that there's different personalities and I love that too because then you see the difference and like sometimes people will send me my patterns and I'm like oh my god that looks amazing and they just put so much more like attention to detail and I'm like oh maybe I should maybe I should put that much attention to detail I'm more the person if once I think something doesn't look right like if I if a pattern has like I did a pattern and I'm like, oh, I don't think that color is the one I should have picked. That'll bug me. I won't be able to like look back on it and not be like, oh, I wish I did that color. I wish I did that. Um, or if like once I'm done it or like six months later, I'll be like, learn something. And then I'm like, oh, crud. I should have done it that way. That's more my personality. That'll stick with me. But I... I'm definitely the person who cuts corners to fix my mistakes and doesn't lose sleep about it. <laughs> okay, we'll do these two petals um, with our, kind of by splitting our sections. So if you're just joining, I've gone through... Um, kind of how to do this a few two different ways but I talked a lot at the beginning about that there isn't necessarily a method to your which ones you're doing long which ones you're doing short because you really are just filling it in I want to do another big long one in the middle here because we were talking about this and I was trying to find the word the um someone said free flowing which I really liked you know where it doesn't have that uniform look we want it to look just a bit um oh I went way longer on that one than I have on any of the other ones um we want it to look natural we want it to look like it's uh it isn't perfect while also still looking good <laughs> It's that fine line. Okay.
Oh, I like that. Yeah, Kate Kim said, being a perfectionist can stifle creativity. Some even give up entirely. I got past perfection, thankfully. Yes, I actually think that's why um, I enjoyed embroidery so much more than I enjoyed cross-stitch. Um, and maybe I just never got to the point where I learned how to kind of get past the perfection part of cross-stitch. But in my what, what I saw when I was doing cross-stitch was that you have to be exact every time or then you're pulling stuff out and you're restarting because of that and I think that's why I find embroidery so relaxing is because I don't sit around worrying about every little mistake because I know that I can fix it I can go over it I can and it's not going to be the end of the world whereas with um cross stitch I felt like I could never relax and I'm sure as you get better at it or maybe because I only did one cross stitch pattern and was like not for me um but I'm sure as you get better at it and you learn a bit more of like the techniques, it's, you can relax a bit more, but I really like to like fall into embroidery and just like totally turn my brain, like, or think about something like totally different. And I think you can tell sometimes when I'm teaching, I'll be very like specific about the way I think I, I am doing a stitch and then I'll get distracted and I'll be talking about something else and then you'll notice that the way I stitch it is different than the way I taught it <laughs> because I get into a groove where I just don't overthink it and I just do what like maybe feels a little bit nat more natural which I think is fine once you get to that point in your embroidery journey that you're just like I know that these little things aren't a big deal but of course I try to teach it with a bit more like structure I guess is the right word because I know people like that structure but then I'll be like oh crap I just tried to cheat and I did it on camera and you guys saw me <laughs> okay so we are going to start in now with our second blue our middle blue um and I'm gonna, just gonna do this petal here and then we'll do our dark okay so again I'm gonna start from down here and come up try to get you guys back to that one view where it was like really nice and but my lighting keeps changing because nine o'clock in the morning in like Alberta isn't probably the greatest lighting time um to go live but as a mom of two who have kids at school running the business it's really the only time that I can promise you guys I'll be on <laughs> Okay, so we're going from that's maybe far enough down. Going from this center bit. And I'm going sort of in between these stitches or right up to them. It just depends. Um, you can do either or you can do both. That's what I've done. I did see in one long and short stitch video when I was kind of researching um last year about it um where someone actually split the strands they were joining um on their tutorial video so they would like stitch right into that one I tried that and it didn't um wasn't my preferred method so that's fine too if you've kind of like learned that way that splitting the strands that you're joining up to um totally fine I just found it kind of made like you already get a little bit of these like where you're joining you'll get like a little transition spot um that's why I do kind of like the method of tucking them like overlapping them a little bit I find you get a little less of that spot where you can see them like butting up to each other if that makes sense it makes a little bit of a smoother transition so I just kind of go between and then you don't see and I think it's just like the hole that you've gone through and then if you meet at that hole you're going to really see so then when I do this when I'm ready to change you see that it like they blend in so if I was going to pick an option, I would pick 
um, going up. And you can just run your needle kind of along the fabric and find where it separates. And then as you can see, like you just kind of go like this and then they blend in. Sorry, again, when I get into my, my face, into my work, I don't necessarily see if there's comments, so I'm sorry if I missed anything. I try to glance over there, but you get kind of in the zone. Um, so I know we talked, I am missing a, like two stitches of the light blue right there. <laughs> there's like a big gap where there's no stitches. So I'm going to have to come back and there's a bit of a gap right here too. <laughs> it's the one thing about when you're stitching on, um, on a video, like I'm kind of behind my phone right now to try to make sure that you guys have a good view. So it's a little awkward to see your fabric, especially with this color where um, it's so light. Uh, this is a Kona cotton fabric. Oh, no, that's not gonna be right. Oh, I'm getting confused along the side where I am because, sorry, I don't want that stitch there. Um, I have to figure out where I am. Oh, I was on the wrong side. I do that all the time. Get confused about which side when you flip it over. <laughs> so then I stick my needle through. Um, at the point I'm trying to find and then I can find the stitch if that makes sense. I don't know if you guys could see that I was Just trying to find it on the back Okay, sorry about that I got a little because I had it pointed Towards you guys more and I was looking at it from the side and I got a little confused about Where the side of my flower was As I was telling you guys that sometimes it gets confusing <laughs> or it's harder to stitch. Okay, so we're almost, I think, filled. I think I want, hmm, I think I want to add like one longer one kind of right there to just add. Yeah, and then I need to fill in this side with my light blue because there's no stitches there okay tie this color off at the back I think we have I can come back in um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit more of my lightest color and start and go back in, finish right, oh, not in the frame, finish right here, and then finish a little bit of this before we move on, because um, I want that to be done, and I can do the few stitches that need to be done on the one side and then finish in there. My outside lighting is changing drastically as we're sitting here. It's like the sun comes out, it's in my eyes, then it goes away. <laughs> I wish I had the resources to set up like the perfect lighting situation, but I don't know that much about it. I'm currently trying to find um, a uh, find information on like how to get 
maybe a better camera. Like I use my phone, which is really good for doing these lives, but I, and I guess I probably can't do a live from like a real uh, camera. I don't know, maybe you can. But I want, I see these uh, tutorials sometimes on, yeah, now, so now that I filled that in, I just need to come back with the medium blue and just touch it up. I, uh, I see there's some creators who have these art um, or even stitch videos, just like reels on Instagram, and they are so amazing, the like quality of the videos. And I have a camera, like a good-ish camera, it's like a Canon, um, that does some videoing, but... I can't get it to the quality of their videos. And I'm assuming that it comes down to like the level of the technology that you have. And I don't even know what where to start. And I don't know how much money I would invest in a camera situation. But I, I watch their videos and I'm like, it's mesmerizing because you literally feel like you're right there. The camera quality is so good. So I'd I'm trying to look into that. If anybody has knows a lot about videos and cameras um, and technology stuff, feel free to send me some info. Because I see there's a few creators. I just saw a video the other day that I was like, how are you doing? How is it so clear and focused? Because um, even when I do my absolute best, it still doesn't end up looking like that. It's just like, it has to be that obviously the quality of the, um, the technology, like the camera that they're using. But then I go to look online about like what camera to buy. And then they like recommend my camera. And I'm like, no, I can tell there's, <laughs> these are different. They're using something different. So I, I would, I would love to find one. I just, I went into this camera store and Calgary. Yeah. Oh, actually, Jen, I was going to ask you, but I was like the same that the girls who do my photos here, they don't necessarily do as much videography as um, they do still photography. And that was the problem that I had. I went into this camera store in the city that I'm in and it's where I bought my camera and I was asking for a little bit of help on how to get a more focused, better quality. And I kind of got like a bit of a, you have, you have to learn how to use your your tools and I was like but what if my tools can't do what I want, what I want them to do so that, I didn't really get the answer I wanted so then I'm like I'm trying to find the time to research that but I think unless you have all the knowledge of different what different words mean and that kind of stuff it can be it goes over my head right um, but yeah we'll see I'm, I was gonna maybe reach out to some of the creators um, and just see if they'd be willing to share what they use some people are really open about that I got the best printer recommendation from um Tatum at Threaded by Tatum she like shared what printer she was using and I was like oh my gosh you're a lifesaver um but some people don't want to share that kind of stuff so it's it's a t it's awkward to sometimes message people because you don't want to like overstep their boundaries of what they're willing to share Ooh, look at how close that is but can I see it from my view <laughs> Okay. All right. So we're going to, oh, I just want to finish this side quickly. Just. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do this without. Oops. Does it? Not sure it feels quite right. No, I think it's good. Okay. Sorry, I got you guys so nice and close and the view is so good, but then I'm not sure I can see over my phone. I'm gonna have to try to turn it just a touch. Okay. So then like we've done before, sliding it in between those stitches. And I just kind of use my needle and run it along. 
Um, yeah, that's my um, that's my French bulldog. He's old, and actually, I have two dogs that snore. Never. I love how you guys can hear him. There's two. One of them's playing with a toy, and he's making some funny noises, and the other one is right behind me snoring. <laughs> um, what's funny in my house right now with the dogs is that we have a one-year-old, a twelve and a half-year-old. And then, like, uh, she's ancient. She's, like, anywhere between um, 15 and 16. So we've got, like, a little array of, like, two senior dogs and a puppy. And the puppy will go up to my 12-year-old. It's the other one he doesn't even try. He's like, you're not. You're going to murder me if I try to get you. But he'll go up to my 12-year-old and he'll try to play with him. And he'll be snoring, like, right now. And he'll get in front of him. And he'll smack his paw on the ground in front of him, like taunting him. And I have this video of him, like, smacking his paw in front of the snoring French bulldog, who's also deaf. So, like, he can't, he's deaf and then he's sleeping. So he's, like, out cold sometimes. I'll come home and it's like, are you still with us? Um, anyway, he's smacking his paw in front of him and the dog is just laying there, like, just not... And he keeps going a little bit harder and a little bit harder. And at one point, he, like, whacks him in the nose just so, so lightly. Just grazes his nose. And he, like, starts to run, like, the pug, the little baby. And he starts to, like, run away because he's like, oh, this is the one. This is the one that's going to get him. And the French bulldog still didn't move. He was just out cold. And he so it was really funny to watch him, like, tap the floor tap the floor kind of like waiting for him to respond so that he could run away and he just never does and then the one where he actually runs a little bit because he was like this is the one there's no way he's gonna ignore me after i smack him right in the face no he ignored him it was so funny but yeah they're always all snoring they were fighting right before i came on here it's like having the kids here but Okay, so we're almost, I think I'm just going to stick. I wanted to put one right in there. There we go. Right there. And then this side part. The hardest, I think the hardest part is the edges. Because it's like, do I cover all of that white? Do I go with the medium color? So it's kind of just um, trial and error. How much do you want to go with your darker color? How much of the medium tone do you want to be left to be seen? And so you can, sorry, I've got my thread floss doubled up right there. There we go. Um, yeah, you can kind of trial and error it. And if you get to the very end, and I'll give you guys this little trick. If you get to the very end and you're like, you know what? I really wish I had on even one of them. I wish I had a, f a bit more of the light color in there. It feels like I covered too much of it or or I wish I had a little bit more of the darker blue. It just doesn't feel like I have quite enough. Go in with one strand or two strands and just stitch like a couple little ones in there to try to um, blend it out. I didn't... Uh, I didn't put that like on the pattern as a as how to do it, but it's definitely a trick that if you're like, you know what, I wanted, I wish I'd put just a little bit more of this color here, a little bit more of this color here. There's nothing wrong with going back with a touch of the uh, color you want and just adding like one strand and just doing a couple little. Okay. So lastly, I'm going to do the dark, and then I think we're going to be done for today. Um, I think I've given you guys, what are we on, our third, second and third petal. So I think hopefully that's enough for you guys to feel like you got the instruction out of it that you needed. The other option, too, is if anybody has any questions after watching today's live, um, and they're like, I need... A bit more clarification on this. Uh, we have two petals left that I can jump on tomorrow and just like demonstrate anything you guys need. I'm happy to do that. This is probably our most like difficult thing I've done on a stitch along yet. 
and we're not finished yet because we're doing the center and the <laughs> the knots that I'm pretty terrified to do. I'm more scared to do those on live than I am this long and short. <laughs> Because I have like a 50% success rate with those knots. <laughs> so you're going to get to watch. Okay, so we're just, like I said, I'm doing like, I just did the kind of few stitches. Just every couple stitch lengths. And then I'm going to add some little short ones in between. I made the center one pretty long this time because this one I did a little shorter in the center and then I actually think that this these blue ones if you're feeling like it's not looking quite right like you're like I just can't seem to get it right this would be where I would say do less do less stitches and then go in with um the one strand just pop a couple like one strands and it'll soften it up too like I even think that I could do that here and just stitch like a little couple little one strands and it'll really like blend it out and soften it up. So that's an option too if you're feeling like it just feels too clunky. Try that trick if you're because one strand is way more forgiving and you're gonna get like uh you're going to get, it's just going to be easier to be very precise about your stitches by just throwing one stitch in there and being like, okay, that worked. Or, oh, actually, that didn't work, so I'm going to pull that one out. Okay, so I've added three. And then I'm going to add some little ones. And when I say little, I mean like literally just covering that last eighth of an inch there. This one I'll go a little higher. Halfway between. And then, like I was showing, oh, be very carefully. So I'm pushing up on the back with my finger to smooth it out. And then I'm kind of running my needle over it. I like doing this. I try not to like, just be very careful and gentle so that you don't nick it. It gives me a good view of what things look like. And then I can add just a little bit here and there. Okay, I like the way that looks. That turned out exactly how I want it to. And it's very nicely blended into, yeah, there we go. All right, oops, I'm trying to, oh, der. I'm trying to like pull it back, but I just need to zoom you guys out a little bit. There we go. Okay, so there we are. We're coming along. Soon we'll look like this. Can't get it far enough out of the frame for you guys to see. There we go. Awesome, okay, so we are halfway done this flower. We're gonna, I can jump on tomorrow if anybody wants me to do one more, like if you guys, I'm gonna maybe, someone had a really good suggestion in my DMs to start putting a question box um, on my stories and then you guys can pop the questions into the stories box and then I can write them down and answer them on live for you guys because not everybody gets the chance to jump on here. Um, you can grab the pattern on my website. If you go click on stitch alongs, um, you'll find the PDF pattern or the kit. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I just ordered more thread to restock this kit because it's been really popular. So I'll probably keep it in my shop and um, you can get the kit at any time. So this, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So look for that today. I'm going to pop it in my stories. So if you guys have any questions about either this flower or anything else that we've worked on, I can add some clarification or DM it to me if it's longer than a question box. Um, and then tomorrow I can talk about it even on here because I know it's hard for everybody to get on. People have jobs, people have kids, people have lives. So I want to be able to answer questions live for people even so that they can watch the replay. And I loved that idea. Um, okay, so we're going to jump off. We've been on for an hour and 10 and we'll be back on tomorrow for an hour. Um, I can, again, do some of this, but we're going to start moving on. 
to our woven wheel, and then this textured flower, which I'm excited to show you guys. So, uh, yep. All right. Let me know if you have any questions that you want me to answer tomorrow. And thank you guys for jumping on again. Like I said, you can grab the pattern and join um, on my website under stitch alongs there's the beginner one the intermediate and then there's also still the kit and then next month we'll be doing a new stitch along so you can wait for that too if you want to be doing a live one okay thank you so much guys we'll see you tomorrow